Hi guys, welcome to the Artist Server. So today's video is um, about something strange that's going on. So right in front of you here is a LSI 9206-16E. And I like to call this the Bugatti Veyron of LSI cards because it's basically two 2308 chipsets, one here, one here, on the same board. And they're glued together with a PCI switch that's uh, in the middle here. And so it's kind of like taking a V8 and another V8 and just, you know, slapping them together and make a, a 16 cylinder engine. So I call this the Bugatti Veyron of LSI cards. And this is a very high performing uh, SAS 2 card, probably the highest performing SAS 2 card available. And uh, you normally only get a card like this if you are running a, an array of SSDs that can really push the six gigabit per second. So, but anyway, uh, I'm in the middle of processing a batch of these cards and I ran into uh, a batch that's behaving kind of strangely. And uh, I'm gonna show you what that's about. Um, and I'm gonna also show you how to fix it. So in case you guys uh, buy this card or, or any other actually, really this, this applies to any LSI card, but um, in case you run into some weirdness like this, um, you'll know what to do. Um, now, for me, uh, I all the cards that I sell at my eBay store are fully tested, and I actually plug in cables to every SAS port uh, to make sure that all the SAS lanes come up and are working. Um, not all vendors do that, and obviously um, the vendor I got this from didn't do that because none of the SAS ports are working. That's what's going on here. So this card is on, the server's on, the, the heat sinks are getting very hot. By the way, this card gets really hot and you want to make sure that you have a, lo a lot of fan uh, air blowing on it. But anyway, this card is on and it, the heartbeat LEDs, you can't see them because they're on the other side, are blinking. So the card looks like it's behaving fine. I've got the SAS cables plugged in, but you'll see right here, now here are the two 2308 chipsets and you'll see that there are no links up and in fact even stranger no links down and in fact each individual link is set to off right so normally that would be up or down not off so uh, that's the dead giveaway of what's going on with this and I'll show you uh, that in more detail in a second here but anyway this card seems to be working normally until you plug in a SAS cable and none of the ports work so for all the cards that i sell i make sure that all of these um sas ports will work obviously th these cards that i i'm processing right now the sas ports don't work and m you know most of the time the reason why i test all the sas lanes is because there are usually tiny capacitors on the sas lanes that sometimes get broken off and so you can't really tell and sometimes one or two sas lanes might not be working correctly and so that's why I always, always test every SAS lane on every single card that I sell in my store. And I know not all vendors do that, uh, but being a server enthusiast and being on the other side of this where I used to um, buy stuff from other vendors and getting cards that you know initially look okay, but then the SAS lanes didn't work or something like that, um, I make sure that the stuff I sell is fully, fully tested. Now, this card obviously doesn't work, right? But fortunately, this is not a hardware problem, meaning that there's nothing damaged on the board. I've already taken a close look at that. And uh, earlier in, in the other screen, I, you saw that the ports are in an off state, not a down state, but an off state. And so anyway, I'm gonna show you what that's about and show you how to fix this in case you run into the same problem. So uh, I'm gonna cut over to the screen recorder now because it'll probably be easier for you guys to see the commands I'm typing in and stuff like that. So you can learn how to fix uh, a card like this if, in case you, should you ever run into this type of situation. All right, so let's switch over there now. Hey guys, so here I am on a terminal. Uh, this is an SSH terminal that I've connected to that uh, server. And let me just kind of show you that we have the card in here. Okay, so you'll see that we have two uh, SAS 2308 chipsets. Uh, those are the two chipsets on that 9206-16E uh, card. And if I run SAS the flash uh, list all boards, you will basically see the same thing and you'll see that the board name is indeed the SAS 9206-16E. And if I just do a listing for one of these uh, controller chips, you will see the firmware is fully up to date. It's on version 20.0.7.0. And uh, I don't have the BIOS uh, or UEFI ROM on this card, 
but otherwise everything is normal and then I'll just also just for completeness sake I'll show you that the other chip is basically the same and you'll notice that they have the same serial number because it's basically the same card so I've got this 9206-16E uh, card in here, but it's not behaving normally. And so I'm gonna show you that with the LSI util command. So this is a really powerful uh, utility or tool, if you wanna call it, um, to work with LSI cards. I highly recommend it if you're doing anything advanced with LSI cards to basically check out this tool because uh, we're gonna use some of the capability of this tool today to fix this card up. But let me just kind of show you what the problem is first. If I run LSI util s, which basically scans everything, you will see that it found uh, two MPT ports. Basically, we have two controllers, IOC0, IOC1. And you will see that all the links are off, 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 right? And so nothing's working. So the card seems to work. The card warms up, the heartbeat's blinking, the firmware is available. Obviously, I can list the firmware information so I can communicate to the card. But when you plug in the SAS cables, nothing shows up, okay? And here, it's in fact telling you that all those ports are in an off state, okay? Now, that's an, you have to kind of pay attention to the details here because off uh, is different than down. And normally what we would expect is either up or down. If it's connected, it's up. If it's not connected, it's down. But when it's off, that means it's been administratively shut off, okay? And so um, let's look into one of these chipsets in closer detail. So I'm gonna just pick the first one. And so that's LSI util P1 for the first port. And I'll do dash E for, I think it's like the enhanced menu. So this program, um, can be run on the command line, but it's it's kind of more designed to be a menu-driven uh, tool. And so if we hit this, you'll see it shows you a whole listing of all the options and it just scrolls by the whole screen. So we're gonna have to page this. So um, let's try uh, 40 lines. Let's see if that works. No, that's still too many. Uh, let's try 35. Okay, so 35 seems to work, all right. So you can see here, uh, starting from the top, it's, uh, there's options to deal with the firmware, the BIOS ROM, um, you know, various other settings. It can also work with the IR firmware, the, the integrated RAID firmware. And so, um, so anyway, there's a lot of options here, basically. And I'm not gonna talk about all of them because that would just be a very long video and not relevant to what we're doing right now. But, um, but let's start with one option that will tell us all the SAS port states and that's option 68 here. So you'll see option 68 is show port state summary. So if I hit that, um, again, it'll tell us, well, we already know that all the links are in an off state. It tells us the firmware version, that's 20.0.7. And it tells us the firmware settings here. So this is firmware settings. And so here is the uh, SAS address, uh, multipathing is disabled, you know, all these other things. But what really interests us and that's going to solve our problem um, where the SAS lanes are not working is when you look at the eight SAS lane settings, you'll see, first of all, link enabled is no, 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 no. Okay, that's not normal. And uh, link minimum rate and maximum rate are 1.5 and 6.0, oh, that's fairly normal. Um, initiator enabled is yes, 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 yes. And that's normally what we would expect that these cards would act as an initiator to connect to uh, storage devices that are target devices. But it's also got target mode enabled um, here. So that is not normal. And the port configuration is uh, set to something other than the default. And so obviously this card has some special settings and I believe a lot of these cards were used in some sort of um, NAS or SAN device. And so maybe the, the software that was working in that, in, where this card was working in, required these special settings, but these are definitely not the default settings. And um, basically, if you try to use this card as a normal HBA card, it's not going to work. Um, in particular, you know, if all the links are disabled, it's just not gonna work. And that's exactly why the links up here are all in the off state because they are administratively disabled. Okay, so now you can go ahead and change these settings manually. Uh, and I'm gonna walk you through that a little bit, but um, I'll also show you a, a shortcut. But let's just go through the, the manual way first. So um, let's go through the menu here and 
Option 13 is change SAS IO unit settings, and that's what we want to do. So let's enter, oops, let me get into the prompt. Okay, so we're going to go into uh, option 13, and it's asking me basically all the settings that we saw earlier uh, that we saw in uh, the option 68. So I'm just going to hit enter to get the defaults here because I don't really care about these settings. This Okay, so this is the part that I care about. Here are all the ports, all the SAS lane ports. And you can see, again, they're disabled and we have target mode enabled and the port setting is uh, some particular setting. I'm not sure what those are right now, but, um, and so if we wanted to change this, we could do it one by one. We can say, um, we're gonna work on SAS lane zero first and link state is currently disabled. So we're gonna hit one to enable that. Okay, and min rate, um, so this is just wanna accept the defaults because those are just fine. Initiator mode is enabled and that's normal. Target mode is also enabled and that's not normal. So I'm gonna disable that with zero. And then port uh, configuration, um, I'm gonna set this to eight, which is makes it uh, auto config itself. And so now you can see that zero port is now uh, set to what you would normally expect from an HBA card. So now it's enabled and initiator is enabled, target mode is disabled, and port is in auto config mode. Okay, so this is normally what you would want. And you could then manually go through all uh, eight ports or the other remaining seven ports here and basically set it up. And then, you know, you would be back to normal. But there is a shortcut to this. And so let me just hit return to quit and go back to the menu. Um, so the easier way to solve this problem, if your whole point is just to kind of get this working, is uh, these two options here. So 60 and 61. 60 basically shows you what are the non-default settings in the firmware. And you know, you, if you wanted to confirm that indeed, whatever settings it has right now is just not the default, is not the normal settings, you could type in 60 and just, uh, it dumps out a bunch of stuff that, you know, unless you really know what you're, looking for, um, you might not fully understand, but at least it'll confirm whether there are differences or not from the default, right? And, but we already know it's obviously not at the default, it's in some very strange state. Um, the other option is now 61, and 61 will basically restore everything back to its default settings, and that will uh, enable all the SAS ports. So let's go ahead and do option 61. All right, so we've now done that, and if I uh, go for option 68 to show the state, you will see now we have link enabled, yes to all ports, and that's exactly what we want. Uh, initiator mode is enabled on all ports, and target mode is disabled on all ports, and then port configuration is all on auto. So this is the desired default state for this card, and this is what's going to get this card working again. But You'll notice up here, the links are still in all off, 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 off state, okay? And that's because although we've made the changes to the firmware, it is not a runtime change. This is kind of the, the state change. And so um, we have to reset this uh, chip in order to, uh, to have those changes take effect. So to reset the chip is option 99. And we'll just give it a few seconds here. It's gonna take a while. Okay, so now the reset is done. If we go to option 68 again to look at the states, now you will see that we have the SAS links, uh, four of them at least are at six gigabit. And the other four where we don't have a cable connected right now, instead of off, it's now down, okay? And so that, um, that setting change that we did, basically restoring to its default state, uh, allowed this, uh, to basically work normally again. And now all the SAS ports work again. Uh, of course, I'm gonna connect the cable to these down ports just to make sure that there's no physical damage that uh, would prevent this, these four ports from working. But, um, but I'm pretty sure that this is, um, you know, in the, the, the original problem of these ports being administratively disabled is now solved. So I'll hit zero. And if I do a LSI util dash S again, you will see that the, the first chip that we worked on is now behaving normally. And in fact, you can see the SAS enclosure. Uh, basically, I have a SAS expander connected to this. And you can see that it's connected as one of the devices to that chip. Now, 
the other chip, which we haven't touched yet, is still in an off, 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 off state. And so we're gonna go ahead and fix that. And I'm gonna show you a slightly different way to fix that this time. So we're gonna do port two, which is for that second chip, and dash E, and I believe what is it, 61. Well, actually let's do 68. Let's look at the state. So all the ports are off and they are disabled. This was what we expected, what we saw in the first chip. And target mode is also enabled. Okay, and the port configuration is uh, something other than, than the auto. So we're going to fix that now by using option 61. And this is going to basically restore everything to default. Okay, and now if we do 68 again, we will see that now everything is enabled um, uh, and target mode is disabled and port configuration is in auto. And so this is all now the desired state. But of, of course, the links are still off because we haven't reset the card. And so now we're going to go ahead and reset that second chip on the 9206-16E card. Okay, so now that that's done, if I show the port uh, link states, we're gonna see six gigabit uh, on the first port, okay, the four lanes there, and the second port is not connected, so it's showing us down and not off. And everything is now behaving as expected. And so if I do LSI util dash S again, you will see now that the second chipset is looking identical to the first chipset because I only got one cable to the first chipset and one cable to the second chipset. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish testing this card with the sec uh, moving the cable to the second ports on each chipset too, but, but at least you can see that uh, it's now behaving normally. Uh, the SAS ports are working. And in fact, you can also see the SAS expander that this cable that's connecting to these four ports um, is connected to. So anyway, that's how you fix this, guys. I hope that uh, you find this helpful. If you ever run into a card that seems to be working, you can communicate with it, you can list the firmware, you can update the firmware. Everything seems to be working, except when you connect the SAS cables, um, the hard drives are not showing up. Okay, this might be one of the causes. Um, this is, not, of course, just one of possible you know, reasons why your hard drives might not show up when you connect the SAS cables. Um, there are plenty of other reasons, but this is at least one of them. And this requires a little bit more advanced knowledge about these cards and how they work. And in, partic in particular, how to use the LSI Util program to um, reset the firmware settings in order to get this working. And so I don't think there's a lot of, uh, I guess, information about that online. And so I thought I'd share this with you guys just in case you ever run into a situation like this. And um, now you know how to fix it. All right, so anyway, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give me a like and be sure to subscribe to my channel to see more tips and tricks like this on LSI HBA cards. Um, thank you very much for watching and have a good day. All right, bye-bye.